I thought it would be a good idea to make a little video before I send these away. One's off to America, the other one's off to Taiwan. Most lovely, kind, patient people as have waited for me to get these done. And I've uh, just done a batch of 20, they worked very well indeed. Not a single error in the manufacture, which is quite marvellous. That means it's no scrap because I'm very liable to throw things into the scrap uh, bin. Nothing's retained, it doesn't please me. And if it doesn't please me, by God, it'll irritate, so we'll get rid of it. Anyway, here's a stainless steel pin three millimetres in diameter and I want this to be a very good fit I'm going to lock to lock tight it in a minute across here because it's it holds the cap iron in and the, the iron itself and there's one of the little mini irons anyway the point is that um, it, the video is to demonstrate how accurately you can drill holes there is the hole there's the pin hardly any slop in it you can as you push it in whoops it's fallen by itself that's unusual before it's stuck up all the time and um, we'll lock tight it in but the pin itself is five thou shorter than the overall width of the body which means that when I press it in with the homemade punch we can uh, just guess, gauge by experience when it's two or three thou down beneath the surface the natural fact it'll be centred between the, s the two sides of the body itself and um, here's another one here let me see to do, they've already been uh, sprayed with the activator now look at that one there, that just will not fall through by gravity you can feel that the rod is gripped all around its circumference and luckily, just by luck a little bit of practice and experience it won't press fully home when I've come to drill right through the other side, obviously the drill is cut tighter they're all doctored drills, there's not a single drill I use in the workshop that isn't doctored or modified for instance when I drink, drill the two holes in the honing guide for the stainless rods they're drilled with um, a 4.7 actually has the web ground off centre but just off centre a certain amount uh, which means that the hole itself becomes a light push fit gauged by plug gauges for the two stainless rods that's quite tricky because you must always resist resharpening the drill once it's cut in right you leave it and the other point is that um, these are the irons for the luthiers this is a a slab of cast iron with a piece of 1 8 polycarb on it, very handy way to work and um, these are the irons themselves, hardened and tempered and because I enjoy making the same product and modifying on successive batches, for instance here I've used a little small suspension hole so that when these things dangle in the flame among the fire bricks for hardening and tempering instead of the iron wire making contact with the what will be the cutting edge the iron wire suspends the article merely from the top so it's clear of what will be the important bit later on and these are right and these I've had a quick touch on my number one hunting guide just to get them ready to send away to the customer it's up to them to really finish on them later on but they'll cut quite well by that so I'm quite pleased with that and when I do a batch of ten of these irons there's generally two or at the worst three that are reject because they're have distorted in the opposite direction to give me a convex surface and to lap on the engineer's diamond lapping plate a convex surface down to flat takes forever it's much easier just to select the ones that are concave so you're lapping the two ends which are the, the bits that matter that's the business end there the one with the bevel I'm quite so uh, okay and people say that the irons function very well indeed very pleased with them so that's good so the whole idea of the little video was to show that by doctoring a drill and modifying it, modifying it in certain ways you can produce extremely accurate results there's not a single drill I'll have used that's straight, off on the, straight from the box as it were um, that's a good subject and I might write something in live journal blog for that we'll see there we go, little postscript these are the two little assembled planes and uh, radius sole and the little blue steel screws they're made all as a one-off basis, it's handmade screws in the lathe they're not hardened and tempered but they are blued which should be sufficient for the job number the three, and what uh, is just as with the drilled holes what marks these as clever is that the threads are a very good fit into the body um, I learned that quite early on when I got the ornamental lathe when I was just turned 18 that the quality of fit and finish, particularly the threads was utterly incredible, especially for something 1895 so from then on 
it's important that when you make a screwed part it is a good fit not a, not a, not a fit that takes needs to be driven in or abused to get it to work but something that functions smoothly but close minimum slop then you have a stronger a stronger thread and of course there's other bits and pieces in the box we have other little knobs we've got other parts ready to assemble the rest so that's quite good and what have we got here we've got a bag full of cap irons very cleverly about the cap iron is that when you take it out it's got a small brass pin which means that it can only go so far down into the mouth or into the frog or whatever, I'm not quite sure which bit call. I'll just make these off the cuff, I don't rehearse these things but it means that every time you slide it in there's, been a, there's just a little bit of clearance there, I think about two thou give it a quick tighten and you've got to resist all the pressure that you need, that will hold it securely I think that's worked quite well they're all stamped with my name on the back of them that oval stamp which we used to use in the reels and that's it Right, please. So, right, we'll get these parceled up. Oops. There you go. 